Welcome back. I want to introduce our fourth computer programming project for the class. And previously, we have developed a working and validated laminar boundary layer flow solver. And it was validated by comparing with the Blasius solution, which is a third order ODE. Now we're going to take the exact same marching solver and implement a basic algebraic zero equation turbulence model of Baldwin Lomax. Let's look at the equations first. We'll modify our laminar flow solver, and we have two major governing equations, which are continuity and momentum. And one might ask, what's the difference between the previous set of equations and the present? Well, the continuity equation looks exactly the same, except now there's bars, which are the RAND's averaged mean variables. And in our code, we can just still use u and v. We don't have to change or create new arrays. Just use u and v, exact same code. In the momentum equation, you see the exact same equation, except now new, the viscosity is retained inside the partial derivative with respect to y. And the viscosity has an additional component, the eddy viscosity. And that's an additional unknown. The viscosity itself is constant in this incompressible steady solver. But now we have to create a model for the eddy viscosity. And since it's algebraic, it should dependent, be dependent on the velocities components u and v. We also have boundary conditions, which are listed here along the plate. We have the no-slip condition. And at the upper surface, away from the boundary layer, in the cross-stream direction, we'll say partial v partial y is zero. Also said that there's an initial condition of u infinity, and the incoming flow will be 34 meters per second. Let's just draw that to make sure we understand. Here's our domain. This is the wall where u is zero and v is zero. This is our inlet where we'll have u infinity equals 34 meters per second. This is our upper boundary and this is our outlet, if you will. And since we're in a marching code, we're gonna specify our velocity here and the flow is gonna go this way. And we have an initial condition only of 34 meters per second, but at the wall, of course, we have u equals zero initially. And as we march downstream, we should have, of course, a turbulent boundary layer being developed. And we have our continuity and momentum equations will be determined within the field, the conservation of mass, momentum. But we still haven't closed our model. And to do that, we'll use the model of Baldwin and Lomax, which is a very popular one equation model. So we have boundary conditions. Now let's just look at the Baldwin-Lomax model closure. And we actually had a previous class as part of the series where we talked about Baldwin-Lomax. Historically, it's based on the model of Sebeck and Smith, which we also talked about. It's an eddy viscosity model for nu t, which appears in the momentum equation. And it's a two-layer model, meaning that we have to independently calculate the inner and outer eddy, viscosis, eddy viscosities. And from those form the eddy viscosity. And we'll talk about that in a second. So let's look at the equation for the inner eddy viscosity first, and then the outer eddy viscosity. And we form the eddy viscosity from the two based on a particular position where they're equal to each other in the boundary layer. And that's something we'll have to code with a statement after we calculate the inner and outer eddy viscosity through the whole boundary. Let's illustrate this quickly. So in the turbulent boundary layer, we will have the x direction and the y direction, and we'll plot eddy inner and outer. Whoops, excuse me. O, so the O is for outer, and the I is for inner. And in here, new T and new TI are zero at the wall. And the inner eddy viscosity, when you calculate, should look something like this. And the outer 
Uh, so let's write inner, and the outer eddy viscosity should look something like this. So there's a crossover point between the two at this highlighted location, and the eddy viscosity we'll have to find after we calculate the two, and it should look something like this. Whoops, maybe I didn't draw that very well. So we're right along the line. There we go. So once you calculate the two, you can find the crossover point at some location y and find this eddy viscosity based on u and v. And uh, let's do that now. So what we really have to do is define our initial condition and march downstream of our solver and calculate inner and eddy viscosity at each point. So inner eddy viscosity, closed form algebraic model. L is the integral scale of turbulence, that's the length scale, defined in 10.43 right here. And omega is vorticity, defined in 10.44. So you see omega is just a nice uh, typical equation for vorticity magnitude. Magnitude is denoted by the bars. So that goes right here. And our length scale model goes right here, squared. The length scale goes as kappa von Karman's constant, 0 0.41. A plus is 26 for zero pressure gradient flows. And this is Van Dries term. If we were looking at a wake flow, we would just get rid of the exponential term. So that's how we calculate eddy viscosity. We'll note y plus again in a few seconds. Now we have to also define the outer eddy viscosity model. It goes as alpha times C1. These are constant coefficients for boundular. F wake is a function, and gamma is a function. Gamma is simple. Let's look at gamma first. It is indeed the intermittency model of Klebanoff. It goes right there. And so now we have everything for the outer eddy viscosity except the f-wake function. The f-wake function is the minimum of two functions. The first is the quantity y max times f max, which we'll define in a second. And the second is a constant c2 times y max times u diff squared and f max. So we calculate both of these through the boundary layer for outer eddy viscosity, and then we take the minimum value, which will run smaller, into F wake. There. Okay, now let's look at the F function itself. F function, F max, is the maximum of the F function. This is the F function here. It's a function of y from the wall to the edge of the domain. And it goes from y, the distance from the wall, times magnitude of vorticity, which we already defined, times 1 minus exp of negative y plus over a plus, which is the same as the length scale model of Andriest, right there. So now we say, okay, well, what is, after we calculate f, we just take the maximum value and put it as f max. So f max equals the max of f y. Very simple. Y max is the Y location where F max occurs in F of Y. So just look where the max value of F of Y occurs and use that value of Y. So that's pretty simple. It can be done easily in a logical statement in your program. Then there's U diff. And U diff is simply the maximum difference between the velocity in the profile, and in this case, the wall, because the wall velocity would be zero. So you can just take the maximum velocity in your current profile, u diff. That goes right there. There's u diff definition right here. Finally, there's the intermittency function, which I just mentioned, and it has the value of y max, which we just defined from the max value where f max occurs for y. y, again, is distance to the wall, and c3 will set to 0 0.3 all. I've also mentioned one last thing. It's the y plus value. Well, y plus goes as the distance from the wall times the friction velocity here divided by the viscosity. Not that viscosity or eddy viscosity, just viscosity. The inner velocity, of course, is u bar over u ta, which is the friction velocity. Ta w is nothing but the shear stress at the wall from your current profile. 
For this programming assignment, I ask the students to submit the problem, the equations, the numerical solution approach, which is a marching technique using Craig Nicholson described in the last two projects, an example of uh, convergence by doing grid independent study and a quick discussion of the solutions. In particular, I'd like to see plots at 10 centimeters downstream from the start of the plate of u plus versus y plus compared with the log law of the wall. 1 over kappa, which is 0.41, times y plus plus c, and you can adjust the constant c to try and get your log law to match your profile. And if you do this correctly, you should capture that log law region. Also at 10 centimeters, plot the variation of nu t versus y, and l versus y, all normalized by the boundary layer thickness. Here's an example of these plots from the book of Stefan Pope of Cornell Aerospace. Here's the wall. And here's the edge of the boundary layer. And the y-axis represents the length scale, which we calculate as L in our model, and eddy viscosity. Here's delta is boundary layer thickness, and u sub t is the friction velocity, which we just defined right here. On these plots, you can see both eddy viscosity and length scale are zero at the wall. And the increase, and you should see in your code, about a max new t near about 50% of your boundary layer thickness. Next, I also like to see a calculation of the boundary layer thickness, displacement thickness, momentum thickness, wall stress, friction velocity, and what the value of y is for y plus equals 1 at x equals 10 centimeters on your plate, which would be maybe about this position. right there. And also plot the boundary layer thickness versus tau w versus x. So you will look for the boundary layer thickness as the profile progresses downstream to your x position and tau w. After that, just put your code in the assignment and we'll be good to go for submission. I um, like to see all the source code and try not to use libraries because we worked hard to program our own solvers and everything from scratch. Thank you very much for your time today.